First graders, I just want to let you know that I miss you guys so much. And I thought, you know what, since my first graders are using these clever digital tools, you're logging in, you're doing Moby Max, you're checking out Raz Kids, PBS Kids. I thought, you know what, how about I read my students' books? Okay, I promised you guys I would read you a different book than Junie B. Jones before we all had to go home. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to look through my library, I'm going to find a book, and find one that I could read to my first grader. So this one is called A Jigsaw Jones Mystery. That's the series. And this one is called The Case of the Disappearing Dinosaur. This book is by James Preller. Now, I'm going to separate these videos by two chapters. So each video in Clever is going to be two chapters, okay? Stay tuned for different books. This is our first book that I'm going to read. I'm going to read the synopsis. The synopsis is what the book is about. It's like a summary. It's on the back. I'm going to read it to you. Now you see it. Now you don't. Danica is doing a magic act at Biggs' birthday party. For her biggest trick, she makes Biggs' favorite toy disappear. Poof! It's gone. But where did it go? Even Danica doesn't know. Time for Jigsaw and Myla to use their tricks to fix this mixed up magic. Jigsaw puzzles are like mysteries. You've got to look at all the pieces to solve the case, is what it says. Right there. All right, chapter one. The case of the disappearing dot. Whoa, there's a bunch of books in this series. Uh, the case of Hermie, the missing hamster, the case of the Christmas snowman, the case of the secret Valentine, spooky sleepovers, stolen baseball cards, yada, yada, yada. Whoa, there's a ton. All right. Sorry, I get distracted. Chapter one. Danica the Great. There we go. It was a perfect Saturday afternoon. Blue skies, no clouds. No worries. One of those days you'd like to slide into a Xerox machine and copy 365 times. You could call it a year, and every day would be Saturday. Too bad I was stuck inside, sitting on Danica Starling's living room floor. I was doing a lot of nothing much and pretending to be happy about it. Suddenly, Danica swept into the room wearing a top hat and cape. She beamed while Myla and I politely... Applauded. Off to the side, Lucy Hiller frowned unhappily. Nuh-uh, Lucy said. Your entrance still needs something. It's got no style, no zip. What do you mean, no zip? Danica complained. I haven't even started my magic act yet. You're taking the stage, Danica, Lucy stated. You're putting on a big show. You've got to grab the audience's attention right away. Lucy, I groaned. She's rehearsing for a birthday party. What do you expect? Flashing lights and stink bombs? Gosh, I hope not. Jigsaw, you're a wonderful detective, but leave the magic act to us, Lucy commented. Suddenly, her eyes lit up. I've got it, Danica. You need a snazzy opening. Something peppy and fun, with loud music. You know, big drums and electric guitars. And this time, I'll give you a snappy introduction. Picture. Lucy gently pushed Danica out of the room. Come in after I announce you, she instructed. Danica did as she was told. Then Lucy, all curls and big eyes, turned to Myla and me. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, she boomed. It is time for our incredible magic show. Please put your hands together for... Danica the Great! At that instant, Lucy raced to the stereo and blasted music from WFLY92, the station with all the hits and none of the misses. Boom, boom, boom. Loud music rocked the walls. I plugged my fingers in my ears. Once again, Danica swept into the room, her cape flowing behind her. Lucy cut the music and clapped. Fabulous, fabulous. That's much better, she exclaimed. Don't you agree, Myla? Myla nodded happily. I can't wait until the party tomorrow. I am waiting, I pointed out, and I am getting bored, too. I thought we were going to play baseball. In a minute, Jigsaw, Myla shushed. First, Danica needs an audience so she can practice her magic act. I've got a magic trick, I mumbled. How about if we disappear? I felt a sharp pain in my ribs. 
I guessed baseball would have to wait. Yeesh! Myla sure had pointy elbows. Did someone say disappear? Lucy asked. Um, never mind, I said. That's our big trick. When we really do make something disappear, Lucy winked at Danica. But it's an extra special trick. We're not showing you that one today. Danica raised her hands to silence the chatter. She told us, I'm not only a magician, I'm also a mind reader. But I'll need the help of the audience. Danica explained that she would turn her back. We could then take any coin, a penny, a nickel, a dime, or a quarter, and give it to her assistant, Lucy. I finished a nickel. I finished. I fished a nickel from my pocket. Lucy put it on the table and placed a coffee cup over it. You can turn around now, Danica, Lucy hollered. Danica stared at the ceiling. She rubbed her eyes and strained under the effort. Please, she hissed. You must all concentrate on the coin. I will read your minds. Danica haltingly murmured. The answer is... Dot, dot, dot. A nickel! Again? I demanded. This time, I handed Lucy a dime. Once more, Danica asked us to concentrate. Well, Mila must have thought about that dime was pretty hard. Because all I was thinking was, how did Danica pull off that trick? Hmm. Danica said, biting her lip. This is very difficult. She glanced at the cup and closed her eyes. I see it now, she said. The answer is... A dime! Chapter 2. Lost and Found. Here's the picture. I'll just show you the picture first off. Mila and I left for the park about 15 minutes later. Actually, Lucy kicked us out. We've still got a few more tricks to practice on our own, Lucy told us. We don't want to reveal our amazing secrets. Myla seemed disappointed. I slapped a baseball into my glove and pulled down my hat. We're out of here, I blurted. On the way to Lincoln Park, Myla said, She's pretty good, don't you think, Jigsaw? I'm not a big fan of magic, I confessed. I feel like it's cheating, like everything is one big trick. Duh, Myla replied. That's the whole idea, isn't it? How do you think Danica did that mind-reading act? I was wondering about that, I said. It must be a code or something. I figure that Lucy gives her a secret signal. Or maybe she really can read minds, Mila suggested. Maybe cats can ride pogo sticks, I replied. But I kind of doubt it. That mind-reading act is as fake as a rubber chicken that lays scrambled eggs. I only wish I could figure out how Danica does it. We spent the next half hour catching flies on the soggy grass. No, not the flies with the wings and the creepy suction feet. I'm a kid, not a frog. I was using my signature Alex Rodriguez baseball glove, not a long, sticky tongue. I'm talking about baseball. I threw the baseball in a high, long arc to Mila. She drifted back and caught it easily. Mila is a pretty good baseball player. She's also my partner. We're detectives. For a dollar a day, we make problems go away. That's a pretty good rate. Here's a picture. Mm, get both sides. We found missing hamsters and stolen bicycles, runaway dogs, and brownie bandits. That sounds like something I would do. Brownie bandit. But today we were catching baseballs, not bad guys. That is, until Joey Pignatano, long last name, kind of like Prince Steiner, and Ralphie Jordan came running over. We've been searching all over for you guys, Joey wheezed. You should have looked here first, I said. It would have saved you time. <laughs> huh? Ignore him, Joey, Mila said. What's up? Joey pulled a coin purse from his jean pocket. The purse was made of a red satin with a silver clip on the top. Go ahead, Joey, show him, Ralphie urged. So Joey showed us. He opened the purse. And all I saw was green. Lots of green. The color of money! Mila whistled, Mila whistled softly. Where did you get this? We found it on the way to the candy store, Joey said excitedly. It was on the ground, just sitting there, doing nothing. Interesting. 
I held out my hand. May I? I emptied the purse onto the ground. Out spilled a red lipstick. A few rubber bands. 37 cents in change. A scrap of paper. Two ticket stubs. And a gang of dead presidents. That is, pictures of dead presidents. Two portraits of Andrew Jackson. Three of Abraham Lincoln. And eight George Washingtons. In other words, $63. So the dead presidents reference is... Uh, on our dollar bills and our $5 bills and our $20 bills, all of the presidents that are pictured on there are dead. I eyed Joey closely. What do you plan on doing with this money? We've got to find the owner. Oh, I forgot to show you the picture on the last page. You see it? Yeah. Good. Yeah. All right. Where was I? What do you plan on doing with this money? We've got to find the owner, Joey said, eyes unblinking. That's why I came to you. Good answer, Joey, but you know our rates. We get a dollar a day, I reminded him. Joey frowned. I'm not made of money, Jigsaw. Besides, I just spent my whole allowance on candy. There will probably be a reward when we return it, Ralphie said. Maybe you could split it with us? We shook hands and called it a deal. Baseball would have to wait because of Joey Pignatano had just thrown us a fat pitch right over the plate. We had to take a swing at it. All right, guys, that was the first two chapters. Look for chapter three and four coming soon in Clever. I will see you soon.